so this is my reason number 10 why I love math. Math is beautiful. So as you just saw, this was a fractal called the Mandelbrot set, which is a mathematical object defined in the complex plane with the property that when you zoom in on it, you see a copy of itself. And I could just watch this all day. I think it's breathtaking. And furthermore, the non-visual parts of math are beautiful as well. If arithmetic and computation are the scales and chords, then math is the music. Reason number nine, math is portable. So over the summer, I had the opportunity to do math research at MIT. And I was thinking about a math problem. So during the day, I would go sit on the grass and scribble some stuff down, and then lie on the couch and scribble some more stuff. And all of this were, was well, the kids doing biology research were stuck in labs. So <laughs> the portability of it was definitely nice. <laughs> Furthermore, pictured here is Stephen Smale, a mathematician who made major progress on the Poincaré conjecture in the 60s, a million dollar open problem in math, while on the beaches of Rio. So I don't know of any other field in which you can get grant money to lie on the beach for six months. <laughs> Number eight, math is play. So when I was four years old, my dad told me the following problem. Take a number. If it's odd, multiply it by three and add one. If it's even, divide it by two. So for example, if you start with five, five times three plus one is 16, divide by two is eight, four, two, and then one. The conjecture is that you always eventually end up with one. Now, as a four-year-old, I started playing around with different numbers. And when you're four years old, it's called play. And when you're a mathematician, it's called work. Math can be a lot like playing around sometimes. <coughs> Number seven, math never lies. So the previous conjecture that I just stated has, has been verified for all numbers up to 10 to the 18th power. So why do we bother proving it in general? Well, consider the following conjecture. Take any number and then write its digits out again so that you get a number which is twice in size. That number is never a perfect square, or so people thought until they came across the number 13,223,140,496. So you can never be certain until you have a proof. And math is unique in that it is 100% certain. Number six, math is surprising. So here's a real shocker. It turns out that you can take a solid ball, cut it into some very strange pieces, and rearrange them into two balls of identical size. Now, this violates every physical law that we know of. So of course, the pieces are so weird that you can't actually do it in practice. However, it just shows how unintuitive math is sometimes. <laughs> Number five, math is universal. So the mathematician G.H. Hardy said the following quote, 317 is a prime, not because we think it is so, or because our minds are shaped in one way rather than another, but because it is, because mathematical reality is built that way. And I think that this uh, illustrates the fundamental principle that math would, would develop in any world, not just our own. And so um, not only does math transcend cultures, but um, the Arecibo message was a message sent uh, into the cosmos in order to, uh, what the goal of eventually maybe uh, identifying extraterrestrial life. And the idea was that uh, extraterrestrials would be able to decipher it because they would, too would know about prime numbers. And so furthermore, perhaps Dr. Garrison could suggest that um, prime numbers could be used to uh, encode a message, nuclear waste, beware. So. <laughs> Number four, the math community. This is a picture of me at Canada USA Math Camp where I spent a few summers. And I really loved the uh, community at math camp. And it was very welcoming and non-competitive. And I think that the academic world of math is similar. So mathematicians, there's this stereotype that a mathematician works alone and it's always hunched over his work. But this isn't true at all because Actually, most math papers are co-authored, especially today. And the community of mathematicians is a very vibrant one. Number three, math is hard. But it's hard for everyone, so it's OK. 
problems worthy of attack prove their worth by fighting math. <laughs> In other words, if math was easy, it would be boring. It's the challenge that makes it fun. Furthermore, it's hard for everyone. So pictured here is Andrew Wiles, who solved for Ma's last theorem, which is a problem that stood for over 300 years before he solved it in 1995. However, it didn't just occur to him one day. He worked on it painstakingly for over seven years, then discovered a hole in his proof and worked on it for a whole nother year trying to fix it, and he did. But math is hard even for Andrew Wiles. Number two, math describes everything. Math is unreasonably useful in terms of explaining things in our physical world because it's independent of our world. Why is it that it, it comes in handy so much? Well, I don't know the answer to that, but <laughs> math does have applications in physics, biology, computer science, and even economics. In physics, non-Euclidean geometry turns out to be useful. Now, the kind of geometry that you learn in high school is Euclidean geometry, and that describes our physical space. In the 1800s, some mathematicians said, what if you just discount this assumption? What happens then? And so you end up with this new space in which, for example, the angles of a triangle no longer add up to 180 degrees. And this is non-Euclidean geometry. It turns out that space-time, which is the subject of Einstein's relativity theory, is non-Euclidean, and it's just the thing that you need. Furthermore, in quantum mechanics, abstract algebra is useful, which is a generalization of our operations of plus and times. In biology, the study of how proteins fold together relies on the math of topology. Now, what the heck is topology? It's like geometry, except that distance doesn't matter. You're allowed to squish things together and stretch things apart. So the joke is that a topologist can't tell the difference between his donut and his coffee cup because they're topologically the same. They have one hole. <laughs> and furthermore, in computer science, um, number theory comes to the rescue. So G.H. Hardy, who said the quote about prime numbers before, made a prediction. He thought that his math, number theory, would never have any applications. He was proud of this fact. However, unfortunately for Hardy, it, just 30 years later, the RSA code in computer science was developed, which takes advantage of properties of prime numbers. And that's number theory. So if it weren't for number theory and the RSA code, we wouldn't be able to buy anything online or do any sort of online banking because the internet would not be secure. <coughs> Lastly, in economics, the Nash equilibrium developed by John Nash, the subject of a beautiful mind, is very good at describing certain situations. And this is interesting because economics involves human behavior and you wouldn't necessarily expect that. And lastly, my number one reason why I love math is that math can be passed on. So Isaac Asimov said, there's a single light of science and to brighten it everywhere, anywhere is to brighten it everywhere. So I like to think about the law of exponential growth. So if I tell something to five people and each of those people tell it to five more people, et cetera, then pretty soon by exponential growth, the whole world will be clamoring about math. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>